All right, welcome in. This is the Friday morning iced coffee Q&A with Jacques. This is where I come in on my Friday morning, grab my iced coffee, which, whoops, it's over there. Let me grab it. Just turn on the camera, turn on the Facebook Live, the YouTube Live, and see what you guys want to talk about. Um, mostly about online courses. That's what I like to talk about most. And, uh, and let me see how I can help you guys today. So come on in and fire away with any questions or just let me know what you guys might want to talk about today. Super casual. Been doing this since the beginning of the year. And for the most part, it's gone very well. And I've enjoyed it very much and gotten a lot of good feedback out of this too. So if, you are, uh, if you're jumping in this live, then welcome. And if you're watching the replay later or if you're listening to the replay later on the podcast feed, then welcome to you as well. Thanks for being here. We are presented by Ground Chart Coffee. They are the uh, sponsor of this show, whatever you want to call it. Show, show just sounds too formal, right? Uh, but I guess I do have the online course show. But they are the sponsor of this, um, this, this time we have together here, this segment. And they are the coffee that I use. They are my coffee of choice because they are all organic. Um, they are a small business uh, based out of Colorado. Good dudes running the company. And they don't roast their beans until you check out, buy it, and then they ship it to you in a couple of days. Um, and so it is my coffee of choice for my iced coffee. But they make... Um, you can make whatever coffee you want with their beans as long as you have a way to grind the beans because that's another thing. They don't ship out pre-ground coffee because that's horrible. Uh, but you can get 20% off, 20% off during the quarantine by going to coursecoffee.com. C-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. Hopefully you know how to spell coffee. Coursecoffee.com. Welcome in, everybody. Let me know what you guys want to talk about today. Let me get all my comments and everything where I need them to be able to to be able to communicate with you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So let's see what's going on here. We have... Uh, Joel's here. What's up, Joel? Good morning. Leon Tureski, what's up? Good morning. Hey, uh, Leon, I did use your win of the week audio on uh, on an upcoming episode. That'll be two or three weeks in the future, uh, but we just finished recording like the intro and the outro, so we used it. Appreciate it very much, and congratulations on that $29,000 uh, launch. Um, that's pretty amazing. Um, so we did use that, and I haven't really promoted this yet, but we're debuting a new segment, I think, uh, on Tuesday, a new segment on the Online Course Show. It's called Win of the Week, and it's for uh, anybody to just leave a leave an audio message for me about a recent win, whether it's a, a really you know successful launch you recently had, maybe you just recently got your very first online course sale, maybe uh, your online course has allowed you to quit your job or allowed you to do something else really cool, allowed you to go on some trip. Well, I guess we're not traveling too much right now. Uh, but if there's anything, any big win that you've had with your online course and, and online course business recently, then, then I want to hear about it and pot potentially share it on the online course show. So um, we've gotten three really good submissions so far. Um, and you'll be hearing that the first one of the week on this upcoming Tuesday's episode. The first one's actually from Nate, uh, Nate Dotson, who, you know, many of you are familiar with him and his story with the micro greens farmer stuff. And this uh, coronavirus stuff really affected his business. And he pivoted really, really, really quickly in his business from his main offer being helping, helping um, people to sell, grow and sell their micro greens at farmers markets, which, Farmers markets aren't really a thing right now to to microgreens home delivery and his course is back and firing away on all cylinders again. And I was just I'm very impressed by how quickly he was able to pivot his entire marketing pitch and business model to his customers. So that'll be the first win of the week on this coming Tuesday. And then I think the second one's Leon. Um, yeah, Leon, I'll let you know how it, how it comes out. I'm, I'm excited about it. 
Um, I mean, the main, the main thing with the podcast is really just motivation and inspiration, right? It's the podcast that I wish I had when I was starting my online course and to hear, uh, people's wins and specifically like, you know, hearing about people's wins that are not Amy Porterfield and Pat Flynn and, um, and John Lee Dumas, uh, you know, just, just regular people like you and me, hopefully, um, and hearing about, hearing about wins. All right. So Joel says using Facebook ads. I don't know what you're referring to, Joel. Give me some context there. Um, Jonas says, hey, hey, good morning, Jonas, by the way. Appreciate your podcast. Keep going. Love the long ones. Good for my early morning walks. Awesome, man. I'm so glad to hear that. That's, uh, that's great. Annie Grossman, good morning. She says, how were your live webinars this week? Uh, they went absolutely fantastic, Lee. Um, fantastic, Lee, is that a word? So I did a live webinar on Easter Sunday night at 9 p.m. my time. And then I did a second one the next morning at 9 a.m. on Monday, 9 a.m. First of all, I don't know that that was a great idea because doing two basically three-hour uh, webinars within a 12-hour period was pretty exhausting. But they went well. Um, I had 180 people attend the first one on Sunday night, and then I had 240 people attend the one on Monday morning. Now, the way that I did this, um, it's, it's kind of different than I've ever really done it before. So I do a relaunch to a quarter of my list every single month. That way I have a relaunch happening every month. So I basically segment my, my full list, which is about 55,000 people at this point, into four different segments. And so if you're on my email list, you will get pitched a launch of the course every four months. That's just the way that I do things. It works really, really well. So what I did this month is for my re relaunch, uh, most of the time when I relaunch, it's not with live webinars. This time I did live webinars and I've never done two. I never, I've never given people the option of two different time slots to choose from. But with everybody home, um, I just wanted to try it, see how it went. And you know, for example, on my 9 p.m. Sunday webinar, there was a lot of people from Australia there because it was the next day for them, middle of the day or afternoon for them, but very, very few people from Europe on the night one, right? But reverse that for the 9 a.m. on the next morning. Lots of Europeans there, uh, very few Australians because for, for Australians and New Zealand, New Zealanders, um, it was the middle of the night. But you know, my, my top five countries that, that purchase my course are United States, United Kingdom, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And like when I'm paying for ads and whatnot, I pretty much just target those five countries. Not to say that other countries haven't purchased for me, but those five countries account for 98% of my sales. So I did the two, um, did the two, I pitched it to a quarter of my list essentially, also ran Facebook ads to the webinar, right? So that's new. I've never really done that before. I ran Facebook ads to the webinar um, with my um, my ads girl. You know, she does she does my uh, Chanel tool of um, conversionowl.com. She runs my ads. She does Google ads. She does uh, Bing ads, YouTube ads. And, and most recently, we're doing some Facebook ads now. Very, very, very small scale. But for this, I was like, Chanel, let's let's spend a couple thousand dollars and get a bunch of people to register um, for this thing and just see how it goes. So we ended up getting about a thousand people to register through Facebook ads. Um, so theoretically, people that didn't know about me before. And then another 500 or so registered from my email list. So I had 15 hundred people register. And then, like I said, I had 180 people attend, 240 people attend. Um, and for the most part, it went really well. There was definitely like, you know, I think a lot of the people coming from Facebook ads, there were some trolls in there. Like, um, there was definitely trolls in there, but I couldn't imagine doing live webinars without help from an assistant moderating the chats, right? So my assistant, Emily was very active in the chat, helping me moderate and I just could not imagine having to present the webinar and moderate the chat. And she did a phenomenal job with that. Both times she had to kick out a couple of people that were using, um, that were using uh, language not appropriate for, for everybody and just being, just being very negative and mean. And <laughs> there's no point in that. 
Um, some people just have, I guess, nothing better to do than, um, than just say mean things when it's so easy to just leave. Right. And that's, and, and what's cool is like every, most people would have my back and be like, look, if you're not enjoying this, just leave. Right. <clears throat> um, but apparently that's too hard or some people just want to be aggravating, but it's easy with webinar jam, which is what I use to just kick people out. But that, that was just one or two each time, not a big deal considering how many people were there. And so by far the most attended webinars I've ever done, um, comments were just flying by, you know, and ask where people are located. They would just fly by. It was almost over too overwhelming to even keep up with. Um, but it went really, really well. I sold about 25 copies of my course uh, live and then over a three day stretch of sending out of doing webinar webinar replay uh, I sold 84 copies of my course um, and that's all ultimate package at the top end that's all I sold on uh, on there so it was very successful um, and these past two to three weeks by far have been the most successful two to three weeks in my business uh, ever so the webinars went, went really well the follow-up sequence is happening right now as well um, so thank you for asking. Jonah says I'm European. Yep. Awesome. All right. So Joel says I'm planning to run Facebook ad to bring people um, who I can work with to teach them sing and play the piano for their first song. Your opinion on how I should go about it. If you were doing, I'm a total follower of you. I really esteem your opinion. Thanks, Joel. So um, I know you're more at the beginning stage, Joel. Have you sold any copies of your course yet? Because if you have not sold any copies of your course yet, I would not recommend you pay money for Facebook ads. Because if you haven't made a sale, you don't have a proven concept. And I don't want you to waste uh, money or potentially waste money on a concept that is not proven. So let's get some, some sales going through more organic methods first and really refine and, um, and, and prove out your, your concept of what you've got first before you worry about spending money on Facebook ads. Uh, Leon says, question for your new way of doing webinars without ever webinar. Do you know of a way to show the buy button later without click funnels? I use Vimeo for video and WordPress. Uh, so what you're saying is that you're not using click funnels. Like I, in my new system, you have to have click funnels and Wistia. And what you're saying is you, you're using neither of those. You're using WordPress plus Vimeo. And the answer is, I, I don't know of a way to do that, Leon. The Wistia API made it really pretty easy for us to put in some custom code into the ClickFunnels template to be able to drop in the buy now button at exactly the right time. Um, so with the combination of Vimeo and WordPress, I don't think it's possible, but you could hire a developer and try it out. Um, but the system that I've got with ClickFunnels and Wistia works so well that I would just use that, obviously. Um, so Jonas says ultimate length of different course episodes, 10 by 10 minutes, five by 20 minutes. That's a good question, Jonas. I mean, obviously it varies. My, my piano course videos are anywhere between five and 15 minutes each. Um, I don't like super long ones, but it really depends on the content, right? If, if you're showing somebody, so for example, for teaching somebody online courses, if I want to teach somebody like a really in-depth, like uh, how to set up an evergreen funnel with with active campaign and, and deadline funnel and all that. That might be a one to two hour video. Um, it's just the nature of what it is. But for like my piano course, like it, I want it to be as easy as possible for people. That's 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 my pitch with piano in twenty one days. Is like easy and fast, right? So therefore, it wouldn't make sense to have any long videos of any sort. Um, so it depends on your niche, your audience, what you're trying to accomplish in general, shorter, shorter is better, but you also don't want to have it too short either. <laughs> so, uh, there's too many factors in there for me to give a definitive answer on. So Joel says, uh, sure. Thanks. So I'm assuming. Yeah. So he says, thanks for your answer. I really, it really helps. Sure. I will sell organic first then move up. Yeah. So I don't think you've sold any copies yet. So. I wouldn't personally start with Facebook ads. Some people advise that you do. Uh, I just wouldn't want you to waste money, potentially waste money on Facebook ads. Um, it, it could it could work well, but most likely it probably wouldn't. Um, I know that running Facebook ads to my very first course wouldn't have been a great idea. 
Leon, you're welcome. Good luck with that. Keep me posted on it. Um, so Enrique, good morning, says, hi, Jacques. How did you reach your first customer? Where did he or she see your course? That's a good question. So the way that it worked for me is I got the idea for an online piano course in March of 2013. And I knew very little about how to create and market and sell an online course. I knew very little about how to film myself on video. Um, I didn't know anything about having a password protected membership site, um, sales pages, funnel. I like, I, I was so raw. Um, didn't really know what I was doing, but I listened to, at the time I was listening to like the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn. And so I was starting to learn a little bit about email lists and lead magnets. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so the first thing that I did was I opened up like Google Slides, I think maybe, or, or Google Doc, and I just started kind of writing out the curriculum. No, the very first thing was I did a, a spreadsheet and I, I mapped out the lessons um, and came out to 21 lessons. So I bought the domain piano in 21 days. And then I just started writing out the content and I'm not a great writer, so this took a while, but eventually at the time I got through day eight and I was like, this is a really good like cutoff point. Let me, let me kind of formalize this content from day one through eight and this will be my lead magnet. So um, by April, May, I think I had that up on a simple landing page. I think it was WordPress or maybe lead pages. I don't, I don't think I was lead, using lead pages yet. So I think it was just something in WordPress. And I was, I, I just had like a simple video and it just, just said, Hey guys. And oh my gosh, I've seen that video recently. It's so cringeworthy because it's one of the ver first videos I did, but it was just like, Hey guys, thanks so much for visiting this site. You know, I'm working on the full piano in 21 days course. Um, but in the meantime, you can download this first eight days workbook and, uh, and I'll email you as soon as the full, full course is available. And then there was just a, a spot for your email address and download. Like that was the extent of piano in 21 dayscom back in 2013. And I put some videos on YouTube where I just played some songs. Um, I think there's a Candle in the Wind by Elton John, Mr. Jones by... Um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on one of my favorite bands. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Jones, gosh, that's embarrassing. Um, Counting Crows <laughs> and uh, Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees, just like kind of poppy songs, um, me playing those on piano. And then at the end of every one of those videos, I would say, hey guys, if you want to learn to play like this, jump over to piano in 21 dayscom grab this eight days workbook. So because I put six or seven videos like that on YouTube, had that landing page, collect the email addresses, all the while it took me a long time to launch my course or or build my course and then launch it. I think I launched in November of 2013, so several months later, but I had an email list. Now, it wasn't big. It was maybe three, four, five hundred people. No, probably not even that because I don't think I was getting one per day. So let's say it was it was 100 people on my email list. And so I went to launch my course and uh and i had an email list so when i launched it i launched it to my email list that's all i did was i sent out a couple of emails and it and i didn't do like plf um i wonder if i could find those original emails that i sent out but uh that would be really interesting to see i don't know what where i learned about launch sequences back then or whatever but there was no videos involved it was just like one or two emails with probably some pretty basic copy and uh and i and i didn't make a sale that first day and it was really, really demoralizing for me um, because I had spent all this time. I, I desperately wanted to have an online business that worked for me around something that, that I was passionate about and that I knew could help other people. And I had listened to so many podcasts and stories of people succeeding with their business, their online business, their online courses, and they go to launch it and they would get so many new customers right away. And so I launched it. I was just so, I was so brought down by the fact that I didn't launch a course or I didn't make a sale. And that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about helping you guys with your online course and being successful is because I know what it's like to put in all that work and not be successful. Um, and so, you know, looking back, I did a lot of things wrong, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things wrong. And my email list wasn't very big, but 
uh, fortunately, and, and a lot of you guys have probably heard me tell this story before, but basically the next morning, you know, I checked my phone uh, to see if I'd made any sales because how cool would it be to, to make a sale, make money while you sleep, you know? And at this point in my life, I'd never made any money other than the paycheck I received from my, my, my job. And no, I still didn't make a sale. Uh, my wife was like, hey, go get us some coffee at Starbucks. Try to get your mind off of this. So I go to Starbucks that morning, probably 9 or 10 a.m. in the morning, get the notification on my phone while I'm waiting in line in Starbucks that I'd made my first sale. And um, all the negative feelings went away. And I was, um, that's one of the happiest moments in my life because somebody for the first time paid me money through the internet for something I had created um, that they genuinely thought that could help them. And so uh, that's a very long way to answer your question, um, Enrique. Um, but the answer is that it was somebody that had joined my email list somewhere between March and November of 2013 because they found a random video that I had made on YouTube and then was intrigued by the way that I was playing. They saw my call to action at the end of that video, um, went and downloaded the eight day workbook, got on my email list and then saw that email. And, um, the next day they decided to purchase. So that's how I got my first customer. Um, thanks for the question. Joel says one more question. What is the lineup of work that I need to assign an assistance for? As I understand there is win and calibrate calibration and getting assistance. I do teaching, editing audio, video, and everything with web page and so on. What is the lineup of work that I need to assign? Uh, man, Joel, I'm just not understanding your question. Like, are you saying, are you saying like of all the things that you're doing, what should you outsource to an assistant first? Is that what you're saying? Give me some clarification there, please. That would be awesome. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for being so you know lively this morning. I really appreciate the interaction. Several of you are are, are here watching this and interacting. Um, let me go ahead and knock out some bonjoros. You guys should know the drill by now. I do. Um, I do bonjouros each and every day, just thanking people that purchased my course within the past 24 hours. And when I sold those uh, 84 copies of my course over a three-day period, that was a lot of work. <laughs> but I promise you, Bonjoro makes it as easy as possible. And guys, uh, two days ago, in, I, have a, I have a student center for my piano students, Piano in 21 Days Student Center. And I've been asking them more and more just feedback questions lately. And so one thing I asked them a couple of days ago was, hey, guys, if you've signed up in the last two to three years, then you likely got a personal welcome video from me shortly after you signed up. Just curious what you think about that, um, if that's something you appreciated and if you want me to, to keep doing it. And the, the, response, the responses were, were phenomenal. Um, let me, I'm gonna pull it up so I can read a couple of the responses. And once I read these, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're selling an online course, like, I don't know how you're not doing this. It is so rewarding and p p the students like, appreciate it so much. So let me let me go ahead and knock out a couple of bonjouros myself and then I'm going to read some of these comments from my students. So here's here's Renee who purchased a little while ago. Hey, what's going on Renee? This is Jacques and I just wanted to personally welcome you to Piano in 21 Days. Thanks so much for signing up for the ultimate package just a little while ago. I hope everything is going well with that so far. Good luck and I look forward to chatting with you more as you go through the course. All right, Renee now has one. Hey there, Leisha, it's Jacques. Just wanted to personally welcome you to Piano in 21 Days. Thanks so much for signing up for the entry package yesterday. I hope everything is going well with that so far. Good luck, and let me know if you need anything. Hey there, Graham and Jan. This is Jacques, and I just wanted to personally welcome you to Piano in 21 Days. Thanks so much for signing up for the Ultimate Package 
down there in Australia. I hope everything is going well with that so far. Good luck. And I look forward to chatting with you guys more as you go through the course. All right, so each one takes anywhere between 12 and 20 seconds uh, for each one, depending on what I want to say. I try to make it as personal as possible for people without you know spending too terribly much uh too terribly much time is that proper english there too much time um so there there i just knocked out a few i've got uh, several more in the queue so i'm looking at this thread in my student center um that i told you about there's 63 comments in it so far and every single one of them is is saying yes that is amazing so here's a couple of examples <sighs> of what people said. Um, Charlene said, I like it and I think it's worth the effort on your part. It makes the investment, both time and money, money seem more personal and the personal touch is always a winner. Uh, Eric said, it was great. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw your video. Then I showed it to my wife and her response was like, whoa, it gave us a feeling that you have made a lot of effort trying to connect with us. Um, Joe says, yes, it was so nice, made me feel connected. Peta said, absolutely can't beat a personal touch. Uh, Steven said, I think it is very powerful and makes the product feel much more personal. Um, Hendrick said, Jacques, I remember receiving it when I joined in 2018, and I was well impressed. It certainly was a great touch and a great start to the course. Taryn says, I think it's great, very personal, very appreciated, especially as I am in England. Makes people feel more connected. Uh, Louise said, yes, definitely continue with the personal videos. I'm on day 13 and already pretty stoked about how well I can play by now. Amber said, yes, love the personal touch. It's reassuring that this program is still interactive with the teacher and not just watching videos. Um, Susie said, I enjoyed it. Didn't realize how much I learned until my husband asked me questions. Pretty excited about it. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Angie said, definitely. Yes. Especially this is an online course. So keep up with your great work though. I understand is an extra mile for you. Um, last one, Kimmy said, I love this. It made me feel like the program was personalized to me and that I wasn't just a name on the list. So I'm telling you guys, it's so much, so little effort on your part for such a great return to your students. They appreciate it so much. And a lot of those comments were just saying like, it was so great to not just feel like a number. It was so great to get that personal touch, really feel like I'm learning from an actual teacher and not just some videos. And there's not a ton of interaction in my course, but that little 15 second video that I send to everybody makes people feel like it's super interactive. Um, it's just such a great, return on investment. Hey, what's up, Christy? Good morning. You haven't joined us for one of these in a while. Um, all right. So where are we on the questions, guys? Jonas says, okay, thanks. Appreciated my first course that is yet to be launched in May seems to end up in eight to nine episodes, six to eight minutes long. Yeah. So when you say episodes, I would call that more like lessons, right? Eight to nine lessons, six to eight minutes long, which sounds... Um, well, if that's, if that's total, that's not a lot. Normally we have modules and lessons, right? So, uh, you usually would have like six to 12 different modules. And within that you'd have like two to eight lessons within each module, um, mergers and acquisition considerations for entrepreneurs, raising capital and exiting using screenshots of a PowerPoint presentation that I present mixed in with me discussing each topic plus short 60 to 75 minute clips from different businesses. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems like you're, on, you're definitely on the right path. 60 to 75 seconds, not minutes. Okay. Hey, you know, my course isn't very long. Um, I probably have the shortest piano course. You have the most expensive piano course. So length is one of the least important things. So Christy says, morning, really helpful to hear your story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, so Leon says, my back intelligence emails jumped to about 70-ish per day. My bill for drip is almost $1,000 a month now. It seems to be a bit excessive. I'm thinking to switch to active campaign. How do you like them, Jacques? Uh, man, $1,000 a month for drip. So you're getting 700 emails per day for back intelligence. That's amazing, man. Um, 
Normal for me is about 100 emails a day for a piano in 21 days. Lately, it's been between 300 and 600 emails a day. Um, I'm at about $300 a month for active campaign. And I have 56,000 people on my email list. So I'm on the like between 50,000 and 75,000 plan. I'm paying about $300 a month. Um, Drip is cool. I like Drip, but Active Campaign is the best. I'm telling you guys, it's the best. Um, it is the best combination of user, um, user experience and ease of use and features, right? So things like, uh, what's the really fancy one? Infusionsoft, right? The fee, it's all, it's too many features. It's too, you know, they call it Confusionsoft, right? It does so much, but it's hard for the regular person to use. And then something like MailChimp or AWeber is, is super easy to use, but it doesn't have enough features. So Active Campaign to me is the perfect balance between the two. I absolutely love it. I've been using it for several years. I think before that I was on AWeber. You know, I mentioned listening to uh, Smart Passive Income a lot back in the day when I was first getting started. That's what he recommended. I, I used AWeber for a while. I then tried ClickFunnels for a little bit, like their email list portion. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of ClickFunnels for other things, but I'm, I don't like having my email list there. And then I moved over to Active Campaign based on some other recommendations. Absolutely love it, Leon. Uh, but Drip is good too. It's one of the good ones too. But um, uh, I would recommend Active Campaign. And it sounds like it'd be cheaper for you than Drip. So if you want to check it out, um, or if anybody wants to check it out, my affiliate link, I believe, is just the online course guy.com slash Active Campaign. And I will share some automations with you if you sign up through my affiliate link. Um, that's probably the top affiliate stuff I've got going on. I, I get a, I get about a couple thousand dollars a month from ClickFunnels. Um, and I think next would be probably active campaign, a few hundred dollars a month and, uh, and deadline funnel too. deadline funnels up there as well. Um, Enrique says, thanks for sharing the story. It must feel great to be where you are now. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I've, I had things set up, right. Right. So, um, Piano in 21 Days has been successful for a few years. It's, a, it's on a whole nother level, like this month, at this time. You know, it could certainly tank um, in, in a few months if we continue like a recession. But I, I feel very fortunate and blessed with, with, with my position in business right now. Uh, but I've, I've set all that up, right? I had, I had, going into this insane surge of traffic that I'm getting right now, I already had a super dialed in evergreen funnel. I already had an amazing uh, website with a lot of amazing testimonials on it. Um, diversified traffic sources already had all of that. So I feel like I'm just being rewarded for that right now um, and setting things up ahead of time before you actually need it. Um, Alexander, what's up? Good morning. Hey, Jacques. First time joining live. Glad you're here. Jonas says, uh, need to drop out for my Friday afternoon Zoom after work. Great podcast. Looking forward to learning. Contribute to this Facebook group. Thanks for joining us, Jonas. Uh, Leon says seven hundred, not seventy. Did I? If I said seventy, I read. I read seven hundred. You're getting. You said you're getting seven hundred emails. Seven hundred per day. I, I read it as you're getting seven hundred email opt-ins per day. That's what I read it as. Tell me if I'm wrong. All right, guys, so um, one, so let me tell you like the coolest thing that happened this week. You guys know I'm a ClickFunnels fanboy, right? I've got Traffic Secrets right here. Expert Secrets is right there. I'm gonna get all the, all the books in a box set, hardbound, here in a couple of weeks. Um, big fan of ClickFunnels, just went to the conference, got the two comma club, all that, right? Well, guys, something big happened this week. Russell Brunson followed me on Instagram. Can you believe that? <laughs> so what happened is, so he followed the Piano in 21 Days Instagram account. What happened is apparently he put up on his story that he put a video on his story. It's like, hey, what are you guys doing differently during the quarantine? Are you learning any new things? Uh, staying at home? He's like, for me, I'm doing a couple things. I'm learning piano. He's like, I just bought these 50 things of sheet music. 
and I'm playing more Yahtzee. I think that's what he had said. And so uh, Marley Jacks, who I've talked about before, is is big in the ClickFunnels space. She spoke at the Funnel Hacking Live conference. Uh, she is going through my course right now. She purchased my course, and she's going through it right now. And uh, so, sh so she's friends with Russell Brunson. They obviously know each other. And so when she saw that, she messaged him and was like, hey, are you learning from Jacques at Piano in 21 Days? Or if you're not, you should. And, uh, and, and he's like, haha, no, or something. I don't know. She screenshotted that and sent it to me. And then I don't use Instagram much, but I logged in and she, well, she, she sent me the screenshot, I think, on Facebook. And so I logged into Instagram. Next thing I know, it said, like, I got a no notification that Russell Brunson followed you. I was like, what? That's insane. Because um, she had tagged my my name, I guess. And so I went to see his account to see if he had like, if he was following like 100,000 people or whatever. And he was following like 1,700. So it wasn't a crazy amount, but it was also not a super small amount either. He is still following me t to this day. And I, uh, I did DM him. I sent him a message. And I know I'm going like super fanboy right now, guys. <laughs> um, but I sent him a message and I said, um say no to sheet music there's a better way smiley face and i included the my picture of him um of me and him holding my two comic club awards so like so those of you uh listening on the podcast later this won't make any sense but i'm gonna come i'm gonna come zoom in on this to the screen So you can see, so that was the message I sent him and he replied, ha ha. <laughs> and then I sent him one follow-up message. He never replied to that, but he is still currently following me on Twitter and he replied to me and said, ha ha. So that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, Joel says, thanks for the value that you provide. Thanks for being here, Joel. Uh, Leon says, yep, yep. So 700 emails a day. That is amazing. Uh, Liz, what's up, Liz? Good morning. Says, does StreamYard give you the capability to brand the bottom of your video as shown here? Yes, absolutely it does. That is how I have the Friday morning iced coffee Q&A with Jacques on the screen right now with my image. That is through StreamYard. Just upload a PNG file to StreamYard. I had my amazing graphic designer do that. Uh, Avandro, I've shared his contact in the Facebook group before. He is awesome. Um, and by the, by the way, guys, we are presented here by Ground Shark Coffee, the greatest coffee beans in the world. You can get 20% off by going to coursecoffee.com. David Crozy, what's up, Mr. Co-host? He says, nice. Did you end up hiring the social media man manager? No, I didn't. So here's the thing. I put a post out there for a social media manager because I want to increase my organic social media reach. And I got a, I got a really interesting application from a young girl, 21. Um, so, and, and her application, which she, she didn't want a lot of money. It was, it was pretty inexpensive. And I, and I don't know, I don't want to spend a ton on this right now before I see an ROI, this and that, but she had some good experience. She had managed some, some accounts before, um, really personable, really well done application. I mean, you'd like, I got so many applications, even though it was Upwork, like I got so many applications from agencies and I just want to work with an individual. And so we, we started chatting, communicated, uh, communicating, asked her some follow-up questions. I was like, great. Okay. The next step is let's communicate on, on, um, on zoom is be a very informal interview. And we had it all set up, lined up. This was a couple Fridays ago. I think I probably told you guys that I had an interview coming up for it. She never showed up. She never showed up and I have not heard from her since. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. It was, is wild because, you know, she was very enthusiastic, um, about it. So I hope everything's okay, but she, she didn't show up and it's been a couple of weeks and I haven't heard a single word from her since then. And so there was no other candidates that really jumped out. There's, there's a couple other ones, but they're, they're over twice as expensive as she was. Um, and guys, I'm not always all about the money, certainly, but uh, I'm also trying to save as much cash as possible right now too, because of the uncertainty over the next few months. So that's the story with that. Leon says, I'm planning to become more active on Instagram on personal profile. I feel like Instagram is the future of business cards. Hey, maybe so. 
I just don't understand these people that are like constantly posting stories to Instagram and like daily posts on Instagram. It's just like seems overwhelming um, to be able to do. I feel like there's more important things I could be doing, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Alexander says, FYI, I ordered traffic secrets from your affiliate link. I even opted in for the bonus offer to get the audiobook. Currently halfway through. Yes. Thank you, Alexander. I appreciate that very much. I do get a small kickback from that. Um, and I get even more since you got the audiobook as well. So guys, if you're going to buy the new traffic secrets book anyway, I'd appreciate using my link. As you know, most of everything I do here at the online course guy, the online course show is, is free. Um, and this business, this side of my business relies on affiliate income. So, uh, if you are going to sign up for any of these software books anyway, I'd appreciate using my link. You know, I talked about active campaign earlier, um, click funnels, deadline funnel, but in this case, traffic secrets, uh, I've got it right here. You can get a copy by going to the online course guy.com slash traffic. That's my link. Also on that note, did you guys know that Russell Brunson recently completely rewrote the other two books in the trilogy, expert secrets and dot com secrets. I've got my copy of expert secrets right here. There's no book in my house, well, other than maybe my kids' books, that is more beat up than this book because of how many times I've gone through it and made notes and dog-eared things. Expert Secrets is an amazing book. Most of you watching this or listening to this have probably read it by, by now because it's just such an amazing book for course creators. Well, he completely rewrote it and updated it. And that is now available. And it's only hardcover now. And, um, and... Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on it and check out what's new. So that is the online course guy.com slash expert, the online course guy.com slash expert for the new version of expert secrets. That's officially available. Thanks again, Alexander. Um, Liz, what camera are you using right now? It's so clear. Good question. This is a Sony a 6,400 Sony a 6,400. Uh, it is clear because that is a very fancy camera. It's a DS, DSLR camera that is plugged into my computer via what's called a Cam Link 4K. Cam Link 4K. Um, that basically allows you to turn a really nice camera into a webcam. Uh, but you can't just get an a Sony A6400 uh, and, and hope for the best. You got to get a great lens too. And I've got a Sigma. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Some, some people are working on my house right now on the outside, not the inside. Um, a Sigma uh, 16 millimeter prime lens, uh, a fantastic combination. Absolutely love my camera setup right now. It is awesome. Uh, Leon says, I agree. Some people's whole life is just Instagram. I'm not excessive, just a bit more intentional. Right. Yeah. I just, I'd rather have somebody manage that for me. And I, I think eventually I will. I just want to make sure everything's I'm in the right place with my business before I do that. Um, all right, guys, let me knock out a couple more Bonjoros and then I have a couple more things on my list to talk about and continue to fire away with any questions you might have. This has been a lot of fun with you guys this morning. All right, let's send one to Elizabeth. Hey, what's going on, Elizabeth? This is Jacques, and I just wanted to personally welcome you to Piano in 21 Days. Thanks so much for signing up for the ultimate package yesterday. I hope everything's going well with that so far. Good luck and let me know if you need anything. Bada bing, bada boom. What's up, Jacqueline, Jacqueline? Not sure which one it is, but you got the girl version of my name, so I know you gotta be cool, uh, but I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Hey, look, I see your email address right now. I bet you go by Jockey. Either way, want to welcome you to piano in 21 days thanks so much for signing up for the ultimate package yesterday glad we got it worked out uh eventually hope everything is going well with that so far good luck and i look forward to chatting with you more as you go through the course What's up? all right I've gotten mostly through my list of, oh man, I was supposed to record this locally. My video editor, Fred's going to be so disappointed. I need a checklist. Like every time I go live, I need a checklist because I always forget one thing. Um, basically, I wanted to hit record on the DSLR camera 
and the microphone so that I have a local copy that's much higher quality than the recording. And I forgot, uh, I did it a couple weeks ago and then my video editor, Fred, took the video, extracted a bunch of small clips for social media. It went great. Forgot last week, forgot it again this week. Um, as he says, I need an idiot checklist. <laughs> So anyway, one other cool thing is um, I officially have like a, a like a an illustrator, a sketcher that works for me now, completely part time um, on Upwork, just hourly. She is amazing. I've never really thought about this before, but but think about this: like there was a section in my piano webinar where I just had this one picture. It's it's where I tell my Epiphany Bridge story, and it's this story about how. Um, I had taken piano lessons for 12 years. I'm 17. We go up to this church retreat in Canada, and um, I play a couple of songs. They're old songs, and nobody likes it. And then I realized that's that's literally all I knew how to play. This other guy gets up, plays a bunch of songs, pop songs, and I kind of learn his secrets that night. Um, it's about a you know five to ten minute story that I tell during my webinar. And historically, I've just included like a single picture throughout that entire time because I don't really have any pictures of that that scenario. Well, I got the idea to maybe find somebody to draw out and illustrate the, the various aspects of the story. And so now I've got like 10 different images or, or drawings that I can put up as I'm telling the story. And I used those for the first time in my live webinar and went really, really well. It was really cool. And now I'm reworking some frameworks and some concepts that I've got for online course creation that I'm really excited to um, that I'm really excited to share with you guys one day. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, it's, I think it's, I think you guys are going to really like it, but I want to get her to like sketch it up. You know how like in, in Russell Brunson's books, he's got, he's got his little diagrams. He's got his little, you know, stick figures and this and that. I want to do more of that because I think it, you know, I don't know about you guys, I'm a very visual learner. It helps me a lot. So, um, I got her started on some of it this morning. I'm really excited about that. I never really, before a week ago, I never really thought about having somebody do like drawings and sketches for me consistently for various things, but I think it's really cool. So if anybody wants that contact, she's amazing. Um, reach out. I'm always happy to share resources like that. Uh, Antonia, good morning. Thanks for being here. She says, really been enjoying your podcast. Helped me get through two hours of shoveling snow yesterday here in Colorado. Uh, interesting. Yeah, yesterday was really cold for us down here. Like it got down to maybe 50 degrees. So I was bundled up. In fact, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt today just because I've, I woke up cold because it's still a little chilly. But how about this weather, right? That's one, that's one uh, silver lining about this, you know, the coronavirus stuff happening right now is, hey, it's good weather. At least it has been down here. Not for you, Antonio, shoveling snow. Um, there's a reason I live so far down south. That doesn't sound fun to me. But you live in Colorado. Uh, you, you need to check out, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker, but check out Ground Shark Coffee. They're based there in Colorado. Coursecoffee.com. Uh, she says, thank you for putting out so much valuable content. Well, thank you for being here and participating as well. Um, David says, I saw that part look great. Thanks. He's talking about the sketches for that's my epiphany bridge story. Guys, we've already been going for 50 minutes here. It's the time has just flown by. Um, that's pretty much all the things that I wanted to talk about. So far away, this will be the last call for questions or comments of any sort. And then we'll wrap up here. I've got some, uh, some planning to do for next week over the, about the next hour. I'll be doing kind of my weekly review, just kind of reviewing this past week and then get a plan together for what I'm going to do next week. And then um, in about an hour from now, once I finish that, I'll be meeting with my weekly accountability partner, Nate Dotson, for our weekly accountability meeting. Always look forward to that. Then I'm going to go out and have lunch with the family. That's been a, that's been a lot of fun. Normally my kids are in school. Monday through Friday every day. And sometimes I'll go I'll go to their school and have lunch with them, but that's like once a month type of a thing. But you know, I'm literally having three meals a day with my family these days, which is it's cool, you know, just it's it's um we've been having a really really good time. And so uh I'll usually get up early in the morning, get some work done, 
and then stop when they get up about 7.30, have breakfast with the family, coffee with the family. And, uh, and sorry, Antonio says, yes, I'll be using your ground shark link for my next order. Awesome. They are literally the best beans. Like I, I've been using them before they sponsored this, um, before I was affiliated with them. In any way, uh, try the, try the, the blue belt blend, try the blue belt blend. Uh, blend. I think that might be my favorite. That's kind of their medium roast. Um, that's what I, that's what I recommend, but they're, they're all good. I've tried them all. Um, so, so then I break every, so then I go back to work usually on, on Monday through Friday. I'll go back to work after breakfast about eight 30 and then about 11, 1130, I'll stop, go have lunch with my family for an hour, hour and a half. A lot of times we'll go, you know, take the bike and go on a picnic or something or, or walk, um, and go on a, on a picnic or even go have a picnic in our playhouse or front yard or backyard. And then I'll come back to work for a couple hours. And then, you know, by about three o'clock when they wake up from their nap, I've already been, I've already worked eight hours cause I get up early in the morning. And so I get off then, and then we hang out, we have dinner together. So I haven't not had a meal with my family in probably over a month and it's really great. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll be, I'll definitely be excited for them to go back to school and, and get a little more quiet around the house. Um, but just trying to make the most of this time. Um, and I'll be excited when we can like use babysitters again. Because, you know, yesterday was our anniversary. Yesterday was our nine-year anniversary. And we and I'll tell you, we had a great time. Um, we had the four of us did breakfast in bed. And uh, and I didn't work as much yesterday. We had a really, like, we, we got dressed up. All had a nice, fancy dinner. Got a really, really nice bottle of wine. Um, and, and we just, you know, celebrated as a family. Rather than normally it would just be me and my wife. But it was just fine. So, um, once again, last call for questions and comments here, guys. Uh, let me knock out a couple more Bonjoros because, hey, I got to do this anyway. So whether you're watching me do them or not, I got to do them. Hey, Terry, what's going on? It's Jacques. Just wanted to personally welcome you to Piano in 21 Days. Thanks so much for signing up for the Ultimate Package yesterday. Hope everything's going well with that so far. Good luck, and let me know if you need anything. Uh, bye. By the way, guys, I um, I gave my huge pitch for Bonjoro, Joro, Bonjoro earlier in this and talked about all the feedback that I've gotten from my students about how much they appreciate uh, me sending those Bonjoros, but I forgot to drop the link. Um, Bonjoro.com slash Jacques. Bon, Bonjoro, B-O-N-J-O-R-O dot com slash J-A-C-Q-U-E-S uh, is my link. They actually have a free plan now. I'm pretty sure they have a free plan. So you, even if you're going to go with the free plan, um, I'd still appreciate using that link. Um, that way they know that I'm sending traffic their way. And, uh, and I think the, the next level is only $15. It used to be 25. I think it's down to 15 guys. So it's so inexpensive for what you're actually getting such a great, um, tool, such great people that run the company as well. Um, you know, I, I always say that I, I only I only promote things that I'm using already and believe in the the product itself, but I also believe in the people behind the product too. So, um, you know, I've talked about Russell Brunson. You know, I I, I promote ClickFunnels. Obviously, he's a great dude. Uh, Deadline Funnel, uh, Jack Bourne, he's a great dude. Um, uh, Bonjoro, uh, Matt Barnett is the creator there, um, but I know multiple people that work for Bonjoro, Ollie. They're all great, great guys uh, and girls running these companies that I promote as well. Ground Shark Coffee, I know the 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 main guy personally there as well. So, um, so keep that in mind. If you ever hear me promoting something, it's it's because I believe in the product and the people behind the product too. Uh, Alexander says, "What was the best traffic source for your course when you first started?" Hands down, one hundred percent, no doubt about it. YouTube. It still is pretty much the best source for me. Uh, it's such a great fit as a traffic source for course creators because it's video based and it's it's a search engine too. So people will start on YouTube searching for a solution to a problem and they want that solution to be in the form of a video. So for example, they'll go to YouTube and type in how to play piano, right? And that t same type of person is typically the type of person that would benefit from an online course as well because an online course is video based solutions to problems. So is YouTube just kind of a different way to provide those solutions, longer form. Courses are more A to Z complete systems, whereas YouTube videos are individual answers to certain problems. But if I show up in those search results and they start to resonate with my message, we build rapport, 
and building trust with them. And if you do your call to action right at the end of the YouTube video, and then you've got an amazing website, amazing lead magnet, amazing funnel over on your site, hey, that's how it's done. And so highly, uh, highly recommend YouTube as your main traffic source for an online course when you're first starting out. Leon says, thank you. Appreciate all your insights. Thank you, Leon, as well. All right, guys, we're going to put a bow on this episode of the Friday morning iced coffee Q&A with Jacques. Thanks, everyone, for being here. This was a really fun time um, for me. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. For those of you watching back later, I appreciate you as well. And for those listening back later on the podcast feed, if you're not aware, I drop in the audio from this into the online course show podcast feed. We have the highly produced regular episodes every t Thursday, excuse me, Tuesday, and those are done weeks in advance. But every Friday, shortly after I get off of this live, we'll drop that into it as well. And that is, uh, that is immediate. Meaning if, if you see that dropped on a Friday, I recorded it that Friday as well. So uh, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next time.